Dr. Herrick. Chairman Langford, Chairman Jordan, and members of the committee, I'm Devin Herrick. I'm a health economist and senior fellow at the National Center for Policy Analysis. The NCPA is a public policy research institute. Thank you for allowing me to share my thoughts, and I look forward to your questions. Consumer-operated and oriented health plans, otherwise known as co-ops, as they're commonly known, were a political compromise in 2009 during the health care debate. Congressional support for co-ops was primarily because they could serve a political purpose. Now, whether or not co-ops could serve an economic purpose or were economically viable, it received less scrutiny at the time. Proponents envision co-ops as an alternative to a public plan option that progressives hoped would boost competition with legacy health insurance companies. In a nutshell, the only real purpose for co-ops was a political compromise that served its purpose in 2009, but was never really politically viable. I mean, this is a conclusion that's shared by both critics on the left and the right. For example, Nobel laureate Paul Krugman called co-ops a sham. In interviews, Senator Jay Rockefeller referred to co-ops as a dying business model for insurance, arguing that we had tried this nearly 100 years ago and largely, they largely failed. Yet proponents continue to view co-ops through rose-colored glasses, hoping that they would do what, non, what for-profit insurers supposedly failed to do, put patients ahead of profits. And indeed, the Office of Inspector General fears that the member-owned aspect of co-ops could undermine them as members demand low premiums at the expense of financial viability. Co-op proponents' political agenda further doomed their chances for survival. As we've all heard, advocates for public health coverage have long complained that profits and advertising just serve no other purpose than to push up the cost of premiums and that they're really unnecessary. So, of course, co-ops were dreamed up as a nonprofit entity that couldn't use any of their startup government funding to advertise, to, to reach out to their potential customers. But with little access to the equity markets and without being able to use their startup funds to communicate, they have little chance of success. Furthermore, co-ops are barred from competing in the large group lucrative employer markets. Instead, they have to to compete for the, the individual firm market and the um, small group market. This is the most risky segment of the insurance market. Furthermore, co-ops are likely to suffer from adverse selection, which is attracting more sick people than healthy ones. This is especially true with the troubles we've seen with the rollout of the health insurance exchanges. According to the actuarial firm Milliman, starting a nonprofit health insurer is no easy task and making that a nonprofit co-op adds additional complexity. Finally, with no claims data, with no idea of who will enroll, how many will enroll, or the age of the enrollees, it will be very difficult to accurately assess risk and, and price their premiums. Furthermore, co-ops have a limited opportunity to gain market share needed to have financial viability. And without advertising dollars, they found it very difficult to reach out to their customers. And with the exchanges not working well, they have problems attracting anyone except those who seek them out. And of course, the people who tend to seek out insurance are those who have higher health costs. Moreover, the exchange problems and the stopgap fix, which is allowing insurers to sign up enrollees directly, further disadvantages co-ops. Moreover, the selection process of awarding loans appears to contain an element of cronyism. Congress wisely decided to require loan reef with strict repayment schedules rather than making grants directly, but, but this may do little to ensure the safeguarding of taxpayer funds. The administration has all but admitted that co-ops are risky. With more than one-third of the 15-year solvency loans expected to go into default and 40 percent of the five-year startup loans going into default. And this estimate was made before the recent problems with the exchanges came to light. In conclusion, as with most ill-conceived, undercapitalized ventures run by inexperienced management teams following an outdated business model, health insurance co-ops will most likely muddle along until they run out of taxpayer money, and I expect this will be how most of them will end. Thank you. <laughs>